This is the super simple part two on how to play Canasta. Watch this second video and you're going to be perfect to play with your friends. If you have not watched my first video, please stop right now and go watch that very first video. In this second video, I'm going to go over some additional rules, and then I'm going to go ahead and walk through a game with four players. And if you've watched my other how-to videos on this channel, like how to solve a Rubik's Cube, how to play cribbage, or how to play bridge, or rummy cube, then you know that I over-explain things, and make sure that at the end of the video, you do know how to play the game first thing you need to know is that there's so many variations of the game. It seems like every country has their own set of rules. What I'm teaching is the basic rules of Canasta, but there's an American version that has a very different set of rules. For example, in the American version, black threes and red threes are all considered the bonus cards. You don't hold threes in your hand at all. Also, there's special rules with the number seven and the aces. I'm not going to get into it now, but I've made an entire video just on the American version of Canasta that you might want to check out. Even when I play with my family members, we have to agree on the rules. The next thing I need to talk about is scoring, because I wasn't totally clear on all of the ways you add up your points. There are five ways to tabulate your points at the end of the round, and I need to go over them. So number one, you get points of all the melds you've laid down and get those points. Number two, for every card that a person did not lay down and it's still in your hand, you subtract those points. Now in the example in my first video, I was only playing one other person. So I went out, the other person was hit with points. However, when you're playing with four people, your partner is inevitably gonna have points in their hand. You actually lose your partner's points. Your opponents lose both points in both of their hands. Number three, and this is important, I talked about how a red three gets you an extra 100 points for every red three you have. And while that's true, if you manage to get all four red threes, you actually get bonus points. So four red threes isn't just 400 points for you, you get 800 points in all. Canastas, for every canasta you have, you get points. If you have a canasta that mixes wild cards with natural cards, you get 300 points. But if you have a canasta, which is a meld of seven, and you're able to make that canasta with seven natural cards, you get 500 points. And finally, the team that goes out first gets 100 points. When I played that sample round in my first video, you needed 50 points to lay down your first melt. But the truth is I wasn't totally clear because the way it works is if you're playing to say 5,000 points, as you gain more points round to round to round, the minimum number of points you need in that very first melt keeps going up. So let's take a look at this. If you have under 1,500 points, you only need 50 points for the first melt. But if you're playing to 5,000 points and now you're up above 1,500 points, you now need 90 90 points to lay down that first meld. And if you're over 3,000 points, you need 120 points to lay down that first meld. That actually can change your strategy on how you're playing in the beginning of the game, because now you need to get several melds or wilds in your hands just to start the game. Now let's also talk about the number of starting cards. And in the previous video, I said 11, and that is true. However, there are people who play with variations on that. Some people play with 13 cards to start, some people play with 15 cards to start. Like I said before, there's so many variations on the game that if you're gonna play with friends, make sure you discuss with them exactly some of the rules of it. In my previous video, I just played with one other person, but in reality, where you play partners is very common. So I need to go over something about that, then, and that is the rules about talking to your partner during the round. The rule is that there is no talking to your partner during the round. You can't tell them, hey, I've got a lot of aces, therefore don't discard aces. So what talking is allowed during gameplay? The only thing that I know that you can legally talk about during gameplay is asking your partner if you can go out. For for example, let's say you have very few cards in your hands and you're ready to go out. You are allowed to say to your partner, can I go out? Perhaps they have high cards in their hands. They don't want you to. So they may say yes or no. In my previous video, I mentioned that you can use wild cards to help make melds. And the truth is you can, but there are some rules about it. My general rule is that you can never have more wilds than naturals in a meld. So for example, if you have a five card meld, you can only have two wilds 
and three must be naturals. There are some people that say you're only allowed to have two wilds in a canasta, meaning seven cards, two can only be wild, and therefore five have to be naturals. I bring this up because it's something that you should know about. This next thing is very interesting because I believe that you need to discard when going out. But I have seen people who play where you don't discard when going out. You need to be able to play the final card in your hand on your board and you do not save a card for discarding. It's something to bring up before you play with other people. I've also played variations where when you get to the end of the draw pile, if somebody hasn't gone out and ended that round, instead of reshuffling the discard pile, I've seen variations where people call the round over there. I don't particularly like that, but I'm bringing it up just in case you see that scenario. I've seen variations of the game where you are not allowed to pick up from the discard pile to add to an already existing meld. If you pick up from the discard pile, you must start a new meld with it. And I've also seen variations where that new meld can have no wilds. This makes it much harder to pick up a discard pile. And what usually happens is that the discard pile builds quickly and nobody has the guts to pick up the discard pile. Again, this is a variation that you want to check with your friends to see how they want to play. And the final thing I didn't talk about, when you turn over the first discard pile to start a round, if it is a black three or a wild card, you lay that card down and turn over another card from the draw pile to act as the top discard card. You never start a round showing a black three or a wild. So with that said, let's go ahead and play. I'm sitting at the bottom of the screen. My partner is now sitting across from me, and we're playing another team sitting to my left and to my right. Each of us was able to pull a red three. We lay it down next to us and pick the very next card. Now it's my turn, and I'm about to start my very, very first turn. Being that this is the very first game, I need 50 points to lay down. Technically, between all of these twos, I certainly have enough to lay down. I might as well get the game started with two jacks and a wild. That gives me 40 of the 50 points I need, but I can also have two sixes and the wild, two fives and a wild. I'll discard the three. So my opponent draws a card, and it looks like he also has the 50 points to get started. He lays down melds on the nine and the king. One important strategy is you always want to try to get your first meld down as quickly as you can so that you and your partner can be laying down cards and building your melds. My partner picks from the draw pile, and great, gives us another red three. That's a bonus card. He's able to add to my jacks and create a new meld of seven. Thank you. And on the next turn, my opponent's able to lay down a bunch of nines and give themselves already a canasta. It's my turn again, and there isn't much I can do. I certainly can't take that four. I can add to my seven, but I don't have a canasta, and I'll discard my ace. My opponent was able to add another nine to that canasta. My partner is able to add a joker to our seven, but we still don't have a canasta there. The other team, they're laying down another meld, this one in tens, and they've laid down a jack. So it's my turn again, and I'm going to go ahead and take the discard pile. I'll be one away with that jack, but I actually have another jack, so that also gives us our very first canasta. I'm also now able to lay down a brand new meld of fours, and even though I'm and even though I could lay down the three, there's no point because he's because he's going to be drawing from the draw pile anyways. I might as well. So the guy to my left looks like he can't do much, but he did drop a five, which is something I could use. Ironically, my partner didn't take it, but put down a five and discarded with the king, which was a little risky. And sure enough, the other team picked up the king and were able to add it to their king meld. At least they've given me the five. I'm going to go ahead and take that five because I know there's nothing underneath it and I know I can use that five. Now just quickly, a, si a simple but obvious strategy, when it comes to laying down cards in the discard pile, you don't want to lay down something that your opponent could easily take and just use as I just did. So along those lines, there's no reason for me to lay down that king. I might as well hang on to it as a defensive move. The opponent to my left doesn't do anything, my partner doesn't do anything, and the opponent to my right does nothing. Just quick pickups and drops off.
Now, I don't want to drop the king and the 10 because they have a king and 10, and they'll use it. And if they pick up the rest of the discard pile, I happen to remember that there's three queens in there, which is just another 30 free points they can get. The opponent to my left has nothing. My partner lays down a 7, which is still not enough for a canasta in 7s. He's, and it looks like the opponent to my right is taking the discard pile, which is unfortunate because I know there's good cards in there. He started a new canasta in Queens. That's going to be a lot of points. And he discarded a 4, which is good for me. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the 4 because I can use it. But I think I'm going to go ahead, and I hate to do this, and I don't want to lay down my king or my 10 because they could easily just pick it up and use it. And since they have so few cards in their hand, they may go out soon. I hate to be stuck with those points, but I am going to. And with that, I'm able to lay my five down and discard. In some games, you ask your partner if you're able to go out. In this particular game, I'm just going to go out. And let's talk about the scoring. It was a, it's a first round, so there's no previous score. The first thing we do is subtract the points in our hands. Unfortunately, my partner had quite a few points in his hands. Even the combined total of my opponents was less than that, which is why you sometimes want to ask your partner if you can go out. In terms of melds, you're adding up all the points in your hands that you had laid down that were not part of canastas. Our opponents also had more points in their hands. However, where we did better is in canastas. Nobody had natural canastas, but my opponents had two canastas, whereas we had four canastas. So we got four times 300. It's 300 for a mixed canasta. So we got 1,200 points for that. My opponent only got 600 points for their two canastas. We had three red threes for 300 points. The other team had one red three for 100 points. And finally, we got 100 points for going out.